In this National RTAP training tutorial, we will focus on uploading data to a trip planner like Google Transit. We recommend that you have your GTFS Builder Guidebook open to Section 16. Congratulations! You've prepared your data into a zipped file, and it may look like this inside of your feed folder. This zipped file is what we will be using to upload. You've also used, with our other training tutorials, the validator found here, gtfsvalidator.omnimodal.io. You've confirmed and resolved all errors and reviewed warnings if they need to be updated as well. In order to complete the Google License Agreement, you prepared a Google account and that Google account will be the login for the Partner Dash with Google. You may have decided to host the file at your agency website or National RTAP. Let's quickly review that. Here are two sample agencies that have decided to host their GTFS at their website. On this particular page for this agency, their developer page, they might have prepared a terms of use. That's optional. How much does it cost to use GTFS free? And is there a registration? Yes or no. So this is one agency's GTFS page. Another page is found here where CATA in Pennsylvania decides to put their developer tools right on their home page. This is where an interested party would come to access the GTFS file. National RTAP can also host your GTFS file. Once you upload your data, you will be issued a stable URL and it's important to keep the file name the same each time you upload the file. Now that the file is stable and available, let's go to our partner dash in order to see how to upload it at Google Maps. We will log in to the account that we're going to use that we've issued to Google for our test environment. And then we navigate to partner-google.com and on signing in there, we will see an icon for a bus. Open app. At the partner dash, you will have a feed name, often with the state and country, and your agency. And at times you are asked, what is your feed ID? And this in bold will be used. Here is the email that you've issued to Google to access your account. How do you upload data into your partner dash? You can either decide to upload the file directly from your computer, and you'll be using the uh, zipped file that you have and then choose open or if you have a stable URL you go to the feed configuration and fill out this form how you'd like to transfer your content. Will they automatically choose it from this list? If you're going to use the URL from National RTAP right now it's an HTTP if it's in the future a secure location, you'll update that. You'll fill in on the line the path to the URL that will host your feed. And you'll also set, if you'd like, a day of the week and a time of the day. The convention has often been Thursday at 1 a.m., but you can choose a different time and retrieve your data and then say save. If there are reports that you want to see and what your data looks like, you come down into the live and update and you can view the data that looks like this. The partner dash tells you information that you've included in your GTFS about the service timeline, majority of service and when it's going to uh, expire, the number of trips, um, all these different details about your agency that you included in your data set. Down below 
are each of the colors for the routes as well as a link to the trips and route. The route that we've been testing and working with is displayed here. The schedule for the route is identified here with a calendar and if we don't have service on Memorial Day that is shown and the times for departure can sometimes be a little tricky to see because it's a long list of stops and you have to scroll down so all of the departure times are there. If there are variations in the trips and the trip groups those are shown as patterns. I'm looking now at calendars to reconfirm that the holiday dates that may or may not have service, for example, on July 5th, we have no service on all of our routes, but we may actually offer service on May 31st, Memorial Day, for one of our routes, and so it's an active service day. You can quickly go through your data set using this calendar function for the different routes that use different service ID. I now selected the Stops tab within our validation report and I can see in different areas the total number of stops and zoom in on the map and review any stop locations that I want. I've zoomed in on the map and now I can see some of the stops that we've been working with in this interface. I cannot edit them here, I'm only viewing them. The blue bus icons will only appear if your data has been launched at Google Maps. Do not be surprised if you only have a bubble for the data as you begin testing and working with your data set. Using the Queries tab, you'll be able to review roughly 50 different trips that are randomly created to save you some time in testing your data. We suggest that you right-click on the list if you want to come back to this list more easily and a new tab will open up with a sample trip that you can review the details and confirm that the transfers are correct, uh, where the rider would be walking to get to the bus stop, and all the details are looking accurate. If any corrections are needed, you'll go back into your Import-Export Workbook or schedules workbook and make that correction and then upload the data again. If you use the right click you can come back to the tab that has the random queries and go through more of the trip plans on this list. When you're in the test environment your data will not be visible to riders or the public and only via this login and when you prepare those trip plans in that queries section your data will show confidential. That assures you it's not live to the public. Here are some sample trips from the San Carlos Apache tribe test environment a few months ago. There's a section in your validation report for errors which may include warnings and in this case we have a stop that's unused. None of these have to be resolved, but they may be something you'll want to look through. Congratulations, you've reviewed all of your queries or as many as you could get through, resolved any concerns, uploaded your data again to this partner dash, and you're ready to request a launch with Google Maps. The Google Transit Partner Team will be in touch with you via email and send you a link and a form to fill in that assures Google you've reviewed your data and you're ready to launch. Then they'll begin their quality assurance review and you'll work with them to resolve any concerns. Our last highlight in this section are the feed registries that will allow your agency to be published at other trip planners. Catabus that we looked at earlier with their developer tools has their feed file published at transitfeeds.com, a feed registry. And, and this allows applications to use this data. Another feed registry is Transitland. Transitland offers a display of all of the routes on one map, including that for Catabus. 
Another feed registry that's being developed is the National Transit Map. And at this time, you will use the feed URL that you've developed, your stable URL, using FACES to upload to the National Transit Map. We've now reviewed how to publish and upload your feed, how it can be made available to multiple trip planners and apps, and now you are ready to go live and share your great information with the world. Thank you for your interest in GTFS Builder. We're here for you. Support at nationalrtap.org. If you have any feedback or concerns, reach out to us.